Hey guys, welcome to Ask Truth Apologetics. So um, there's been uh, some news recently, and of course, if you're watching this in the future, there's always going to be news of some radical Islamic extremists doing what their prophet said that they should do. Uh, in this particular circumstance, a teacher in France um, had his head cut off because he was talking about the freedom of speech um, and probably how it relates to the Charlie Hebdo massacre. So Charlie, uh, Charlie Hebdo is a magazine that um, printed pictures and images of uh, Muhammad. And then afterward, some couple of Muslims went in there and started shooting and killing a lot of the employees of that magazine. Um, and so he was talking about the freedom of spree speech, freedom of expression, and apparently it had offended a couple of the Muslim students. And so um, a Muslim man, an 18-year-old Muslim man, found out about this, and he went and found the teacher and killed him, cut his, cut his head off. Um, so for me personally, um, I was growing up here in America during 9-11, and so after I saw the terrorist attack, I wanted to look into the religion of Islam, and quite frankly, I didn't look into it very much until a couple of years ago, um, and what I've discovered is actually pretty shocking, um, because a lot of the stuff that we see happening today that we consider to be extreme Islamic um, people and not in line with doctrine, I kind of see it a little bit differently from what I've been able to, to read and what I've been able to gather. Um, so I'm going to look into that a little bit today, um, determining whether or not Islam is truly a religion of peace, or if it's a religion of dominance uh, where, when it comes to Sharia law and things like that. So of course, uh, I'm going to look into chapter 9, Surah 9, and how that relates to what Muslims are ordered to do. And we're going to talk about a couple of the um, what Muslims will say are objections to say that it's not calling for violence. And then I'm going to break it down into why I believe that it is actually calling for violence. So we're just going to jump into it. We're going to read what it says. Okay, so this is verse 1. Okay, and I'm just going to kind of read this straight through, and then I'll go into uh, an explanation of what it is that I'm reading. Okay, so it says, A declaration of immunity from God and his messenger to the polytheists whom you have made a treaty. So, paying quick attention to this. Um, so, it's a declaration of immunity from God and his messenger to the polytheist from whom you made a treaty. So, think, someone who's made a treaty... Um, you are making this, um, this is the declaration about that particular treaty. Um, so in regards to that treaty with the polytheists, they say to the Muslims, so travel the land for four months and know that you cannot escape God and that God will disgrace the disbelievers. So God is basically saying that he's going to disgrace the disbelievers and, and to those polytheists, they cannot escape. And a proclamation from God and his messenger to the people of the day of the greater pilgrimage that God has disowned the polytheists. So God here, Allah here, is making the announcement that he has disowned the polytheists. So he's removing his, his mercy or grace from them. Um, and so has Muhammad. So did the messenger. So if you repent, right, so again, speaking to the um, polytheists, uh, if you repent, it will be better for you. But if you turn away, what are they turning away from? They're turning away from Islam. Um, know that you cannot escape God and announce to those who disbelieve a painful punishment. So right now God is saying, look, polytheists, you have an opportunity to join up with Islam. And if you do, that's going to be best for you. However, if you don't, what waits for you is a painful punishment punishment. So he could be talking about the painful punishment in hell if they turn away from Islam, or he could be talking about a painful punishment um, coming in more in the near future in their particular lifetime. Um, so in this particular circumstance, we'll talk about how it's both. Um, except for those among the polytheists with you with whom you have made a treaty. So there's an exception for who um, are 
are not going to be harmed. Okay, so they're saying you can harm all these polytheists that you've not entered into a treaty with, but for these polytheists that you are in the treaty with, you need to withhold harming them um, only if they did not violate any of its terms nor aided anyone against you. So, and this is really important, guys, I want you to really pay attention to this. So fulfill the treaty with them, okay? Fulfill the treaty with them for how long? To the end of its term, okay? So this means that the treaty has an expiration date, and the very next verse here that we're going to read is going to talk about what, that, what happens at that expiration date. So we move on to verse five and it says when the sacred months have passed so that means at the end of the treaty we are going to do something what does this surah say it says kill the polytheists wherever you find them so that means the polytheists who have entered into the treaty with you and they have upheld their end of the bargain you do not break the treaty with them but when the sacred months have passed, kill the polytheists wherever you find them and capture them and besiege them and lie and wait for them at every ambush. But if they repent and perform the prayer and pay the alms, then let them go on their way. Okay, so let's break this down here again. Okay, so they're, they've entered into a treaty. And the Muslims are to uphold the treaty so long as the polytheists do. Once the treaty has expired, once the time has passed, and when is that? Well, we read it right here, right? It says, when the sacred months have passed, okay, what are you supposed to do? You are supposed to kill the polytheists wherever you find them. Um, so Muslims are going to say, well, that's only if they break the treaty. That is not what this says. When we scroll back up here to verse 4, it says um, that you are going to accept for those among the polytheists with whom you've made a treaty. So you do not punish them until right you fulfill the treaty with them. Right, to the end of its term, we scroll down. The very next sentence shows us exactly when the end of the term is. Once the, the sacred months have passed, that's the end of the term. And what are we supposed to do with this? We are supposed to, when I say we, I'm speaking as if I'm a Muslim, we are supposed to kill the polytheists wherever you find them. How are you supposed to do that? Well, what you're going to do is you're going to capture them and besiege them and lie in wait for them and ambush, and you're going to kill them. But, okay, this is what I want to pay attention to, but unless they repent, okay, meaning they repent. They say, I no longer want to be a polytheist. And they perform the prayers like Muslims do. They pay the alms like Muslims do. So what is this describing? This is describing that the polytheists have become Muslim. When they become Muslim, you let them go on their way. Okay? So to me, this is pretty straightforward. This is very clear as to what it is that is happening okay so they're saying kill the polytheists wherever you find them you're going to hold you're going to uphold your end of the treaty you're going to uphold your end of the treaty until the sacred months have passed once the sacred months have passed that treaty is no longer um functioning and then you begin to slaughter and you begin to kill them it's very apparent in here what that is okay so again, keep the treaty with the polytheists until the expiration date of the treaty. Once the expiration of the treaty ends of the sacred months, then it gives you clear instructions on what you're supposed to do. And it says that you should kill, or some translations say slay them wherever you find them, wait in ambush, and you kill them. Okay, so that's it. When we read this, when we see these types of events happening, we understand that they are following the dean and the order of their prophets, right? False prophet. Um, 
evil prophet, the, the guy who says to kill everyone who does not agree with your position. Now, I get a couple of um, Muslims who will say, well, you have to take into account that if they're good to you, there's other surahs that say that, you know, you should respect them, you should do all these types of things. Well, there are surahs that actually say that to you, your religion, to me, my religion, blah, blah, blah. Um, but there's a there's a doctrine of abrogation. OK, so we are looking at Surah 9, which is the last major revelation from Muhammad, meaning that this is the last thing this abrogates. So if there's any um, chapters that came before it in terms of chronological order of when they were revealed, this is going to abrogate them. So the last marching orders of the Muslims, and that includes today, right? Because there's no expiration date on when they need to stop killing the polytheists. They are to kill the polytheists wherever they find them once the sacred months have passed, okay? So once the sacred months have passed, no expiration date, they kill the polytheists wherever they find them. Um, now, Muslims, if you're hearing this and you're mad at me, Okay, which you will be, and I know you're going to ignore everything that I've said. I have not made anything up, right? If I made something up, please show me where I misquoted your scripture. But you will not find that because I have quoted your scriptures accurately, okay? So if you're offended by what I'm saying, you're not mad at me. Please don't be mad at me. I know you will be, but I, it's not my fault. This is your prophet's fault. This is your religion that you follow that says clearly what I just said that it says. Okay. Um, and if you are offended by that, you should be. That means that you have a kind heart and you are a better person than the greatest person ever, which is supposedly Muhammad, which you will, which if you're better than him, that means that he's not an actual prophet. You've been following a false religion. I know that's going to hurt your feelings, but there is a religion out there where it says to love your enemies, to pray for those who persecute you. Okay. And that is a greater love because I know uh, Muslims like to say Allah Akbar, which means that Allah is the greatest or greater, but whatever. Um, but I can show you, I can demonstrate to you, Jesus from the Bible is far superior to Muhammad and far superior to Allah when it comes to loving his enemies. Okay. And guess what? Christians, we are far superior to that. We are called to a higher standard than Allah is called to. We are better than Allah. So when we, when you Muslims say Allahu Akbar, Allah is the greatest or Allah is greater, he's not. We Christians, human beings, mere humans, are superior to Allah in our love and forgiveness of our enemies. Okay, Allah does not love those who do not love him, which indicates that his love is dependent and contingent upon humans. Our God, Jesus Christ, loves you regardless, right, of if you're an enemy or not. So we need to reevaluate, right, Muslims, you need to reevaluate what it is that you're following. And I assure you that when you go to the Gospels and you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and or John, any of those Gospels, you're going to find a love in there that you've been yearning to experience. Once you do that, reach out, talk to me, talk to one of your Christian friends, and we will help guide you to the true path, which is Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Remember, Jesus truly loves you.